All right, ladies and gentlemen, the best part of the week, Power Ranking Tuesday with King of Power Rankings himself. Now, I, last week I did this. This is obviously last week's rankings, by the way, that are on the screen. Last week I did this Monday night. I could not do that because Monday night's game between the Rams and the 49ers had major repercussions on this week's Power Rankings. Now, I do do these a lot of uh, stuttering there. I do do these on a week by week basis. So they stay kind of foundational, but they are moved by what you did the previous week. So it's not necessarily where I think the teams will be long term. That is part of it, but it's more of a it's, a, it's a nice balance between what have you done for me lately and what do I think you will do um, as we progress moving into the next week. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. This is last week's uh, chart here. You can see the bravery that I had having the Dolphins at four, the Jaguars at 10, the Eagles at one. Um, some of these very brave, very controversial. Um, I, last week I said that the Dolphins were at four because I thought they would lose to the Bengals. Lo and behold, they did. There's going to be a lot of shakeups this week, a lot of shakeups. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take some teams off. I have my list pulled up here, so I don't mess it up. The teams that are falling off. So the Jaguars, not not a terrible performance against Philly in the Doug Peterson Bowl. Um, statistically, they were kind of dominated. Uh, they made some mistakes and they had five turnovers. So the Jags, a brief a brief time in the top ten. Uh, the way they're playing, though, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them there again. Tbh. So let's go ahead and take them off. The Bucks are going to remain in there. Where they will fall is to be yet determined. The Browns, I'm not going to say a bad loss at Atlanta, but it was a bad loss. They kind of dominated the game there. Um, just got held up at the goal line. So they will not uh, be a part of this <clears throat> moving forward. The Rams, okay, so big Monday night move here. I gave Rams a lot of credit for being Super Bowl champions, for having a lot of pieces from last year. Here's the truth. The Rams are shit. <clears throat> the Rams are cheeks. They're ass, however you want to say it. Matt Stafford is looks rusty, looks hurt, looks old, looks like a worse version of a lot of quarterbacks out there. Like he looks like a worse version of Kirk Cousins. Let me ask you this. Who's better right now, Jared Goff or Matt Stafford? Uh, it's got to be Jared Goff. Matt Stafford is playing at a very low level. It, he's playing at the same level to me as the Mitch Trubisky's of the world and players like that are getting benched. The Rams right now are just not a good team. Now, <clears throat> they did run up against the 49ers who have their number, and the 49ers do what the Rams don't want you to do. The 49ers stop the run. The Rams are desperate for the run. They're desperate for play action. And another big part, of, and, and what the 49ers can do, is they can kind of counter and, and zone and, and do their running schemes to negate Aaron Donald so they can take their best player out of the game. Um, and we got some good Jimmy last night. So... LA, look, <clears throat> here's the deal. They are Cooper Cup and Cooper Cup only. I mean, I there are few teams in the NFL who run their offense through one player like the Rams do. I was going to say Minnesota. But Minnesota can do things on the ground. They can get Dalvin Cook involved. Um, you know, they don't have to run things through uh, Justin Jefferson. And they can get Adam Thielen involved. Matt Stafford flat out refuses to look anywhere else besides uh, Cooper Cup or Tyler Higby sometimes. The Rams just aren't that good right now. I mean, they're they are. I un, I would not be surprised at all if come the end of the year they're in the playoffs. But by no means right now do I think they're a top ten team in the NFL. They're getting off the list. The Ravens, interesting loss. So interesting loss. On one hand, they dominated the game, right? They dominated the game, and I, I saw a stat where they have two losses, but they've only been trailing for 14 total seconds this season, and they're 2-2. Two and two. That is bananas and pajamas. The two losses, they were dominating the Dolphins, 21 nothing, I believe. Dolphins come back and win. They were dominating the Bills in the first half, and they scored, what, three points in the second half? So they got an, they got an issue in the second half, but, a, but 14 seconds away from being undefeated and probably being number one on the list. The Ravens have two problems. Problem one. They're way too Lamar Jackson centric. Like they, 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 and I, I don't mean that as they own, it's not the same problem as the Rams, right? The Rams are, they only use Cooper Cup. The, the Ravens don't only use Lamar Jackson, but they can only go as far as Lamar Jackson goes. Like if Lamar Jackson is bad, they are bad. If Lamar Jackson is really, really good, they are really, really good. And it's because their entire scheme, their entire 
roster basically is built around him. So when he makes mistakes like he made in the Bills game, the team really suffers. Whereas some other teams, they can their quarterback or running back or whoever their star is can be off, can have a weak game, and the team can still can still go off. The second problem the Ravens have is their secondary is total garbage. Their their secondary really, really has been struggling. But the Ravens do remain on the list. Where they will fall, we shall find out. Green Bay, uh, interesting win. Interesting win. They played a uh, Bailey Zappi-led Patriots team. Uh, a tight game, even though the numbers kind of skew that Green Bay had the game more in hand than usual. I like what Green Bay has going on. Green Bay's peaking. Uh, they're, they're slowly kind of increasing how they're how they're um, they're out their out their performances this year. They started off tough, started off real bad against Minnesota. Ever since then, they've had good win, good win, and you can si- kind of see that Green Bay's finding a- another level. So they're uh, they're obviously going to be on the list. Miami, I'll, I'll tell you this. Yes, I did declare, and I was correct, that Miami is, it was going to lose to the Bengals. I was right. What a shock. Everyone knew that was going to happen because I said it. Yes, two is out for this week and should be back once uh, the PR storm. I mean, <clears throat> his concussion clears up. Uh, I still believe in the Dolphins. They, they're going to remain in the top 10. They're not going to be um, at four, but they still will be in there. <clears throat> All right, KC. Philly and Buffalo are all going to remain. So let's get the new teams in here. Let's get some new teams in here that are going to be um, on the list, and then we'll move them around. So we have one, two, three. So three. Okay. All right. So these are the new three teams. This is a crazy way we're doing it this week. I still haven't figured out the best way to like throw my list out there. So let's go ahead and start at number freaking one. Okay. So these are the ten. Let, let's go ahead and take all ten teams and put them down here, except for number one. Number one is Philadelphia. Philadelphia remains unchanged. I actually thought this was a great win for Philly because Jacksonville was jumped on them early, right? Jacksonville got up on them early. Jacksonville looked like the real. I believe it was 14 nothing, And then Philly came back and dominated. And Philly, that this is going to be, kind of be a theme of this, of this week, but it's good to have those losses or those wins where you snatch – you snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, where you have to come from behind, uh, Ray J style, where you know you're you're in a dog fight, where it's a tough game, where it's raining or you're fighting, or it's a lot of grit. The Bills did that this week. You know that that it's easy whenever you're winning every game by 21 points and you can run your offense and you can kind of be out in front, you can blitz and whatever, but to win games both by dominance and by a tough fight or or winning one that you probably shouldn't have or playing. I always say the best wins a team can have is when they don't play very well, but they still win because that shows that they have a winner's mentality. It shows they can win close games and it gives them something to to build on and grow on for that week. You don't want to win every game by 40 points. I think the Eagles are amazing. Uh, Jalen Hurts is the man. He is so good. Uh, Their defense is incredible. They probably have the best offensive line in football. They may have the best secondary in football. It's just one of those super complete teams. I'm not going to sit here and say they don't have a weakness. I'm not going to sit here and say they're going undefeated. But, man, with their schedule, how weak their schedule is, and just how good they are all around, I mean, they are good in every facet of the game. Like, every single facet of the game, they are really, really good. And they're, they're good at the things that don't even show up on a box score. Like, they're good at, at like, they're, like, they're offensive line. You know, like, they're, they're linebackers. Things like that are just insane. And, I mean, they, they everything they do travels. Like, you know, would, would I sell my house to bet on the Eagles to win the Super Bowl? No. But would I sell my house to bet on them to win the NFC East? I probably would. The Eagles are really, really good. 14 wins, to me, is a disappointment for this team. Four, 14 and 3 is a disappointment. All right, let's go to our number two team, another shakeup. So I had the Bills there last week. The Chiefs, look, I love what the Chiefs are doing. I love Patrick Mahomes against the Bucks. My God, he was otherworldly. I mean, that was Pat, that was vintage Patrick Mahomes of where people are asking, like, all right, you know, is this guy the best player that we've, we've ever seen? Is this guy the best quarterback of all time? I think I tweeted it out, but Patrick Mahomes may already be, if he quit right now, he may be a top ten quarterback to ever live. What he did Monday night to the or Sunday night to the Bucks is disgusting when you consider that it's the Bucks. You know, one of the best defenses in the NFL. 
But Patrick Mahomes was on Thanos mode, God mode, however you want to say it. Quick sidebar here. Sunday night, I had a, or Sunday day, I had quite a few cold beers with a friend of mine. That night, I said, you know what? Let's cap off the uh, let's cap off the weekend with a with a little treat. So I ordered a pizza from a lovely place down in uh, the islands, uh, Italian pie. Now I got their Italian pie combination. It's basically a supreme pizza. It's like their house pizza. But I added one special little ingredient. I've never done this before in my entire life. I was really I was really acting out of pocket on Sunday night. Would you like to guess what it was, ladies and gentlemen? All right, it was one topping added. I'll give you. Two seconds. The topping added was anchovies. Never had, had never have had pizza with anchovies on it. Certainly have never like ordered it or asked for it or customized it. But I saw the damn Danny DeVito commercial or uh, interview. There was an interview where he talked about how much he loves anchovies, especially on pizza. So I was like, I'll try it. I like anchovies. You know, I like a village salad, which is cucumbers, tomatoes, feta cheese, and anchovies. And, um, so I said, you know what? Throw them on there, Italian pie. Italian pie shows up. Um, I waddle my way downstairs and grab the pizza. Let me tell you this right now. If you like anchovies, if you like salty, that umami flavor, it's not fishy at all on the pizza. They were very salty. They were so damn good. They kind of tasted like a like a really salty pepperoni. It's kind of what they kind of what how they enhance the pizza. So anchovies on pizza, for me, that gets a check mark. So very good stuff. Uh, but the Chiefs, the Chiefs are amazing. The Chiefs are really, really good. Their defense is so good. That's the crazy thing is that their defense is nasty. And uh, Mahomes and and I mean, what a team! What a team! You're going to hear a lot of people say like they don't miss Tyreek Hill. I'm not going to go that far because Tyreek Hill is, you know, Tyreek Hill is probably the best receiver in the in the NFL. But it's a very different team where before I feel like they would get stopped a lot because Tyreek Hill was trying to take the top off the defense. Justin Timberlake style, and uh, that's a Janet Jackson Super Bowl reference, if you missed that one. And when teams sat back and they couldn't do that, it was a huge part of their offense gone, and the Chiefs would kind of struggle. Now, the Chiefs are just saying, you know what, we're going to spread it out. We're going to dish it to anybody, and everybody can catch passes. We'll run the ball. We'll we'll dump it to our halfbacks, or, or we'll throw it to Kelsey. They're not looking for that, like, insane deep ball all the time like they were before. The, the offense runs smoother, I would say. Um, they do miss that yard after the catch, also known as yak. They do miss that yak where you see sometimes Juju or, or you know, Miko Hardeman or whoever will get a six-yard slant and go down. You know, an eight-yard corner, go down. Where Tyreek always had the chance of taking those corners and, and slants to the house. So that is the difference there. My number three team is the Bills. So the Bills... Too Josh Allen centric, um, you know. I'm I'm not sure why Gabe Davis isn't getting as involved as he should be. Um, I say that as a fantasy football owner, Gabe Davis, please get back involved in the offense. I trust you. Uh, they this is a good win because this is the first win they've had like a short, like a small, um, a short margin of victory, which which is something that kind of plagued them. Uh, we talked about that before that they had to start proving they could win those games if they wanted to truly try and win a Super Bowl. Uh, all, all in all, this was a good win for Buffalo. I think Buffalo is looking a little more human. Um, not to mention, like, super tough spot, right? Like, after Miami, um, all, after all that stuff, to, to then battle uh, Baltimore. They play Pittsburgh this upcoming week, and then I believe they play the Chiefs. So they get a little bit of, a little bit of respite with uh, Pittsburgh. I think I used that word correctly. Pittsburgh is at a 14-point uh, line. If that gets a 14 and a half, I probably will have a slice of Pittsburgh, by the way. All right, number four. Let me go ahead and check. I believe I know. Let me go ahead and check so I'm not messing these up. Number four. Oh, baby, baby, baby. My team, the San Francisco 49ers. Everyone who's anyone knows that I've got a ticket on the San Francisco 49ers to win the Super Bowl. Good Jimmy. Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, I am a little bit biased, Okay. I'm a little bit biased because I do have that ticket and I do love Jimmy. I honestly believe that the San Francisco 49ers are the second best team in the NFC. I honestly believe, I wouldn't lie to you, you know I would not lie to you. I honestly believe that the San Francisco 49ers have the best, one of the best defenses in the NFL. Top three. One of the top three best defenses in the NFL. Maybe top three and they ain't three. You know what I'm saying? 
I believe that their running game is always going to be good. I believe that Debo Samuel is top five playmaker in the NFL. It is George Kittle when he wants to be can be a good tight end. I mean, he doesn't he hasn't done anything this year, but it is what it is. If we get the Jimmy Garoppolo that was that was playing against the Rams, or we get a better version of that, I truly believe that the San Francisco 49ers are good enough, have the talent on their roster to go to the Super Bowl or or at least go to the NFC Championship game. From what I've seen from the NFC, I would say they have the second best team. I think they can, I think they should, will, and can. Uh, it probably should be in a different order. They they should, can, and will win the NFC West. Write it down. You heard it here first. Number five on my list, the Green Bay Packers. Okay, the Green Bay Packers. The NFC, I actually think it's kind of weak, but these teams from five to probably about eight, or really five, five down, I think are kind of the same. Green Bay is, they're going to go, they have an incredible defense, have some trouble uh, stopping the run. Incredible defense. Aaron Rodgers playing at an Aaron Rodgers elite level. Jones and Dillon. I sound like Jerry Jones there, calling people by their last name. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Great one-two punch in the backfield. It's strictly the wide receivers. How far can Aaron Rodgers drag uh, Alan Lazard and Romeo Dobbs? Like, how far can he drag this team? I think he's good enough. I think the defense is good enough. I think that that system is good enough. The franchise, if you will, is good enough to where they will be competitive. They will be in that 11, 10 to 12 wins. Um, They will make noise. I just don't know if the firepower is there. Their offense still isn't really clicking. The explosiveness is is just not there. They have a bit of a gift-wrapped game in London against the Giants with some serious injury concerns. So we'll see how they handle Saquon Barkley and if they can keep him in check. But uh, they need to they need to get going before I can really believe in them. All right, next up, ladies and gentlemen, number six. Number six. This is kind of wild because they lost this week, and they were at, I believe, eight or nine or something last week, and they're moving up a couple spots to six. <clears throat> the Buccaneers are getting healthy, ladies and gentlemen. The Buccaneers are getting healthy, and Tom Brady is getting divorced. Now, some people are going to say, well, Tom Brady's going to be heartbroken. Tom Brady's going to be this. I say no. I say Tom Brady is going to be free of distractions. No offense to Giselle. Uh, Tom Brady wants to play football. He wants to be with the boys. He wants to be with the dudes. He doesn't want to be with his family. He doesn't want to be talking to Giselle. He doesn't want to be getting nagged about what time he's coming home for dinner. This is going to remove the distractions, get the divorce simultaneously. Mike Evans, Chris Goblin, Russell Gage, Julio Jones, all the boys are coming back. Sort out the offensive line, and this team could be the second best team in the NFC. This team could be the, the new number four team. This team, this team is getting right at the right time. Now, I say that I say all that to say that they did get slapped up by the Chiefs. But the way the Chiefs were playing on Sunday night, anybody. Would have got slapped up by the Chiefs. So we'll see. I I foresee the Bucks to get a couple wins in a row here. They're playing the Falcons this week. Should be an easy win. They're they are <laughs> they are not what the Falcons want to see. So the Bucks, if they can if they can kind of get healthy, get right, kind of use these next couple games as like a preseason training camp kind of thing for all these players coming back. The Bucks, I think, could really jump. Now I could be wrong here. Brady could be heartbroken. He could be busy watching reruns of the holiday. He could be watching rom-coms left and right. If that's the case, eh, maybe, maybe, maybe you know, this won't be a great this back of the year for uh, the Buccaneers. Number seven, the Dolphins. Okay, the Dolphins go from four to seven. Now, this is, now, I know two is not playing in week five, but this is just assuming that two's brains aren't leaking all, all over the place and that he's going to play again. All right? I love Mike McDaniels, what, what he's doing with the Dolphins. I like what they have going on. I like to his progression. If all is right, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. If all is right, then I think the Dolphins sit right here at seven. They've proven they can hang with the big boys, with the Bills. Um, they they hung with the Bengals. I mean, they hung with the, the score at the end got out of control. Really, it was a one possession game there. Um, if Tua doesn't get hurt, they may even win the game. So to go into that atmosphere on short rest, after playing Buffalo, you know, defense was on the field for 90 plays. That's impressive. I'm impressed with that. 
I'm keeping them in the top 10. I'm keeping them more more up. You know, a lot of people just drop them. They'd say, oh, you lost. Two is hurt. Uh, F you, Mike McDaniel. They'd drop them out of the top 10. Me, I don't do that. I trust the science. Number eight. Okay, number eight is, all right, all right now I got the full list. The Cowboys. This is shocking to me. All right, this is shocking to me. I did not think Cooper Cup would be able to, or Cooper Rush would be able to do this. If you watched my Cooper Rush Dak Prescott video, you would know how much trouble I had with his name. Look, Dallas, Dallas is a bit of an enigma because Micah Parsons legitimate probably defensive player of the year. Their defense is gnarly. They get after the quarterback and and listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Getting after the quarterback travels. Getting after the quarterback can make you win any game in a passing league, and it certainly can help you in the playoffs. Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard are a wonderful one-two punch. Previously, when they leaned too heavily on Ezekiel Elliott, the Cowboys would sometimes get burned by that when he would have his uh, 18 carries for 27-yard games. But now with Pollard kind of kind of spelling Zeke, they got a nasty little running game. On top of that, if big dog Cooper Rush is playing at the level he's playing at right now and using these weapons, Dallas is kind of an all-around team. Now, how high do I really think they can go? What, what's their ceiling? Can they win the division? No. Could they win a playoff game? Eh, probably not. But they can get there. They can get to the playoffs. Now, here's your question. When Dak comes back, because Dak's going to come back, now, here's, here's another reason why I like putting them in the top 10. When, I, when Dak comes back, I think Dak is going to be a shinier version of Cooper Rush. That's what I think. I think he's going to be a higher paid version of Cooper Rush. And if that's the case, then I think Dallas can be pretty good. Because I, th- I think Dallas is pretty good right now. Um, so I, I like Dallas at 8. They are like the opposite of what Dallas has been. They are a defense first kind of power running team with uh, a serviceable quarterback and great weapons. Like, they're, it, it's a wild team. I mean, I don't know how they're doing it. Cooper Rush is against all the odds, but it is what it is. Number nine, the Ravens. Okay, again, I alluded to this earlier. They are 14 seconds away from being 4-0. They're 14 seconds away from being the number one team on this list. Or maybe, 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 maybe I guess they would be number one if they were undefeated. So they're 14 seconds away. Now, we know who the Ravens are. The Ravens know who they are. They are. They're a dynamic, explosive, big play offense. Now, here's my question to you, ladies and gentlemen. When the Ravens play good teams, why can't they be as dynamic or explosive as when they play shitty teams? Do they, are they just bullies? Do they just take advantage of shitty teams and put up 45, 50 points? Why, when they play great teams, do they have these stretches of being inept? Can they not adapt? What's the situation? Why why do they jump up on the Bills, but then all of a sudden they go radio silent for a whole half? What you know? Why why do they jump up on the Dolphins, but then in the fourth quarter they can't get a first down? What's going on here? Why when they play the Chiefs they scored ten to seventeen points? I need to see the Ravens start knocking out some of these big dogs and winning some of these bigger games. That's what I need from the Ravens. And number ten, the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm. This is more of commentary on how bad the rest of the league is or how unimpressed I am with the rest of the league. I don't think the Bengals are very good. I think the Bengals have some serious issues. Great win against Miami, but, I mean, talk about the stars aligning, right? At home, white jerseys, uh, the, the the Dolphins on four days rest. They just played 90 plays against the Bills. They basically played two games against the Bills. Uh, two gets hurt. You know, if you don't win that game sell the franchise sell the team so yes it's a good win but is it that great of a win probably not that zach taylor i don't like joe mixon can't run the football joe burrow is joe burrow but he we're giving him a lot of leeway you know like has he really been joe burrow when's the last time he was joe burrow i mean he wasn't very good in the playoffs he wasn't good in the super bowl he hasn't been really good this year you know, how far back do we have to go before we see like Joe Burrow highlights or Joe Burrow taking over a game or Joe Burrow being Joe Burrow? Or is he just becoming kind of a social media darling where everyone just agrees he's cool? You know, everyone just agrees he's a cool guy. He's awesome. He's got the swag. 
You know, how, how Justin Herbert has certainly had games and moments where he's like, holy shit, that's Justin Herbert. You know, he's my God. He's doing things I've never seen before. But he, he doesn't have that social media cool factor. So I wonder if I'm just, or if we are, but like if we're already understanding like, all right, the Bengals have to be good because Joe Burrow is so good. You know, I said this either last week or the week before. If you could start a franchise next year with Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, or Joe Burrow, who would you pick? I'm going to tell you this right now. Joe Burrow might be last right now out of those out of those people. I might choose everyone else over Joe Burrow at this point right now. Who's been better this year, Joe Burrow or Tua? I, I, I'm going to need to see more from Joe Burrow, Zach Taylor, and Joe Mixon before I can really take Cincinnati seriously when it comes to that Super Bowl kind of level again. But this is where I'm at with the top 10 right here. This is my top 10 straight from my brain. The most important power rankings there are um, every week. The king of power rankings right here. No one does it like me. We will, of course, react to um, uh, media personality, uh, their, their power rankings, and we will laugh at how wrong they are. But thank you very much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. Content coming at you every single day. We are really, really doing it. Ooh, and no one does it like me.